Now today we're looking at the three main components of a cruise control system. Number one is the actuator. And I'll show you where this lives, what it does, and how to test and replace it. Number two is the main switch itself. So in other words, you press down on this switch and typically either a light turns on within the gauge cluster or maybe a little, little light turns on on the switch itself. And sometimes you'll find light bulbs, many, many light bulbs in these switches. I'll show you how to test those bulbs as well. And then the resume and the set switch. So these typically live on the side of the steering wheel. So this is a Honda S2000. In my case, when I press down on the set switch, nothing happens. The cruise control just does not engage. So I have a problem here somewhere. Now, I'm using very basic tools today. The most expensive one is $20. Chances are you have it at home anyway. If you don't, I'll have links in the description box below. Uh, that being said, let's jump right into it. Now I'm going to start with the cruise control actuator. This essentially sets the speed that you want. So if you're traveling 55 miles an hour down the highway, this keeps the speed at 55. Now if you have no interest in testing this, you're more concerned about the buttons inside the cabin, in the description box below I'll list on how far you need to fast forward so you don't have to waste your time. But this is what I'm going to start with. So now we have a plastic cover that we need to remove. They're just held on by these tabs, one on each end. Lift up the tab, remove the cover. Now it's also worth noting that we have a tangible cable. In other words, we have a cable running to the actuator. On more modern vehicles, you may not even find this. It could be a throttle by wire system. Now if that's the case, Typically, you need a very, very sophisticated scan tool to test the cruise control system. But if your vehicle is older, as this one is, and you have a, an actual cable running to the actuator, this is something you can do at home. So right here is a harness connector. This is how it receives power. And I just want to remove the connector. So right here is a tab. Press down on the tab, pull on the body. And then right here, you will find four, let me see if I can get this on camera, right there, four prongs. Now I need to power up this unit to see if it's working correctly. Now to test the actuator, you need two power sources. Now you can always use the vehicle's battery as one power source, but that's a little difficult and cumbersome. Chances are you'll have things lying around the house. For example, cordless tools, perfect power source as long as they're pushing out 12 volts worth of power. So here on the Porter cable, you'll find your negative and your positive. On the Craftsman, if you look closely, positive and negative. So we know how to hook this up. If you're into RC cars, an RC LiPo battery pack also works. Now to get power from the pack to the actuator, I just have these alligator clips. It's just one wire with two clips on the ends, purchased off Amazon. And if you need any tools, I'll have links in the description box below, essentially of everything that I'll be using today. Now built into this actuator is a magnetic clutch. So right now I can move this cable if I wanted to. But if the clutch is working correctly, we'll hear a clicking noise and this will completely lock out. In other words, I will not be able to move this. So to test it, I need to send power to it. So here's my battery pack and my, my cables or my leads. Now, you may be thinking, how do I know which terminals to touch inside this housing? And you'll see in a moment through process of elimination. So I'm setting the first one. And this is something I did off camera, but I'll show you exactly what I did just to figure out which terminals to touch. So in this case, I'm sending the negative or ground to terminal number one, as you can see here on the left side of your screen. And then, actually, I'll do this so I can show you. So this pack is hooked up, ready to go. So I have ground on the first terminal, or the negative going to that first terminal. Now if I touch terminal number four with the positive lead, or the red wire, I have nothing. Nothing happens whatsoever. Okay, let's try the third one. Here we go, third terminal, nothing. To number two. There we go, you hear that? So that's... This is again something I did off camera just to find 
how to power this up and verify that it's working. Now, I can't move this. It's completely locked out. So that tells me this is at least the, the clutch is working correctly. So that's what you want to do. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do and verify is, is if this is working at full throttle and at closed throttle. So in other words, to see if this motor, there's a motor in here, let's see if that's working correctly. And that's why we need the second battery pack. Now to test the motor, this is when we need the second battery pack. So I just have a paper clip that was cut in half and I placed it inside the terminals. So it makes it easier to make a connection. Okay, let me set that up. Okay, just like that. So now I can quickly use these alligator leads and just boom, ready to go. Really, really easy. So in this case, positive is on my left, negative is on my right. Now, by the way, if you do this test with the magnetic clutch and it doesn't engage, then you have to replace the actuator. Just make sure that you double check, really triple check that you go through all the prongs and make sure that you certainly need one if it's required. Now, in my case, I need to send positive to test the motor. I'm setting positive to terminal number four. Ground or negative is going to terminal number three. So I still have everything hooked up. The clutch is engaged. So let me set ground, terminal three. And here goes number four, and this should work. We should see this guy move. Hold on, a little tricky. There we go. Let me just get this on here. So that verifies that this is now at full throttle or open throttle. Now, if, if I reverse these, the clutch keeps it engaged. If I just reverse these, this should close. Okay. And I'll do this on the bench, by the way. I'll remove this and do it again so you get a better view. That's it. So that verifies that the actuator is working. Again, I'll do it one more time. With my uh, leads here. There we go. Works. One more time to close it. Okay. Now, if you do this test, nothing is happening here, then you'll need to replace it. Let's also do it on the bench. You'll have a little bit of a better view. Now, if I went a little too fast on testing the actuator, I'm going to remove it and we'll do the same test again on the bench. So again, you have a different view of what's going on. Now, before I remove these locking nuts, I'm just marking up where they live. And then over here. Let's see if I can get this without. Sometimes... You know what we'll do? Let's remove this locking nut first. This is a 12 millimeter, by the way. You can even use an adjustable wrench just to break up the slack. And then we can remove this from its mount. A little difficult for me. I jammed my thumb a few weeks ago. It still hurts. I will get it. Oh, get it. Sometimes you can lift it out right out of the body. In this case, you can't. It's just, I need to actually bring this in. Like that. And then there we go. Every car is a little bit different. There we go. Okay. So the cable is removed. And then I have one, two, three, looks like 10 millimeter fasteners. Okay, there's the actuator. Okay, so once again, if I went a little too fast earlier, simply I placed the negative lead or ground to terminal number one. Then power to terminal number two, and there's our clutch engagement. Again, if you're not sure, if I touch this to three, terminal three, nothing happens. Terminal four, nothing happens. Even if I remove our ground, and place it on the second terminal. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. So you, it's a process of elimination unless you have the repair manual, the factory repair manual, what the dealership uses. 
then you'll find precisely what to do, but not everyone has that at their disposal. Okay, then I have my negative lead to test the motor here. Going to terminal number three, which is negative, and then positive. Going to number four. Again, this guy should move. Okay, and then if I reverse these, that's it. So that verifies that the actuator is working correctly. Now let's check the switches inside the vehicle. Now in my case, I have a main switch which turns on the cruise control system and a set and resume switch which sits on the steering wheel so to remove the main switch I need to remove it and pry it out of the dashboard to do that I'm using a trim removal tool again purchased off Amazon I'll have links in the description box below these are terrific they don't break I've had them for years really nice set I think they're $12 off Amazon this, let's see this should work nicely and then I have two Phillips size fasteners holding on the other switch on the steering wheel. So again I have two fasteners that live behind here. I removed the bottom one. Now I'm just removing the top one here. Oh, there we go. This comes out. Let me make sure you guys can see this. This is what it looks like once you remove those fasteners and then pressing down on that harness connector. And there you go. There's that assembly. And then this guy we need the trim removal tool. Just prying this out. I did remove most of it off camera just to speed this up. And then back here is a harness connector. Maybe a little hard to see back here. I'll show you in a second. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so there's the switch and just press down, just like all of these harness connectors, press down and pull on the body. So here's the main switch assembly, and if your switch is like mine, I have two light bulbs attached to the assembly. Now the reason behind that is because one bulb turns on a green light when you press the button down, and on my vehicle this light turns on, but it does not necessarily mean the switch is good, so we need to test it. The second light bulb is when you turn on the headlights at night, the cruise lettering lights up on the uh, inside the cabin. So I want to remove these bulbs. So there's the green one. Now in your case, if you don't have this, you may just see the cruise control icon and the gauge cluster. Here's the other bulb, which is burnt. You can actually test that, but anyway. Now, looking at this switch, on the back, just like the actuator, we have a number of different terminals, and we want to test the switch using a multimeter. Again, inexpensive. This one was $20 off Amazon. I'll have a link in the description box below. And on the multimeter, you'll find it looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot. That simply means continuity. Okay, so you need that symbol on your multimeter. This simply means two points make a connection. That's all it means. Okay continuity. Now, going back to our test leads, this, this is why these are really handy to have. Not necessary, just makes the job easier. I'm going to place one lead on terminal one. We have one, two, three, four is missing, five and six. So again, I don't know which prongs to touch here, so process of elimination. One lead goes to red, grab the other lead to this guy, and I'm turning on the switch, okay? Pressing it down. This is engaged. That's not engaged, or the system is off. So let's pretend that this is in the vehicle. Press it on. And let's start. We should hear continuity if the switch is good. So let's start with terminal two. Okay, nothing. Terminal three. I can get it in there. Terminal three, nothing. Terminal four doesn't exist. Terminal 5, uh, Terminal 6. Okay, so this switch, this switch works, which tells me I have a problem with this guy, which we'll find out. Now, the reason why 
you want to remove the bulbs is because if the bulb is good, so I know for in fact this turns on. So if I place this back in here, one of these terminals correlates with the bulb. So again, press down the switch. Where are my leads? Hook this back up. So that was one and six for the switch, right? One and six. Now, test the other leads. One and two, nothing. Oop, one and three. Number four doesn't exist. And there you go. So this terminals one and five is for the green bulb. And that's it. So this is why you want to remove the bulb because you want to just make sure that you're testing for the switch and not the bulb. And now we're going to look at the final switch for resume and set. So again, in my case, I would turn on the cruise control, press set, and nothing would happen. So we know that the actuator is in good shape, the cruise control main switch is okay, so something has to be up with this. So we can see that we have five prongs inside this, enclosed in this green body, plastic body, and we can simply get access to them right here. So again, same setting on the multimeter for continuity. Let's try to resume first. I'll Place one lead right there. Hold this down. And let's see if we hear anything. So terminal one, then two, nothing. And there we go. So resume is in good shape. Let's try set again. And I'll place this on the other side. For set, like so. Grab the lead here, hold down set, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing. So this is the problem. So I need a new set switch. Now this being a 21 year old vehicle, I can try eBay, I can try parting out, finding a car that's being parted out, or you may be able to find one brand new and aftermarket one. So just do a little bit a little bit of research, but ultimately that's how you test the cruise control actuator, the main switch and resume and set. I truly hope this helps a number of you out there. As always, thank you for watching.